My name is Samuel Johnson, Samuel Chuku Emika. I'm African and I am originally from Harlem. I now reside in the Bronx. All right, now you mentioned you're African. Yes. What are some of the key differences between an African and an African American? What are some of the key differences? Uh, well, I was born here, so like, from what I've seen, I, honestly, I mean, like the African Americans, like from like Mid Alabama and stuff like that. African Americans from the United States and African Americans over here. Yeah. I would say, because uh, they, they've been here for a long time. Right? Yeah. Whereas, like, your family hasn't been here that long, right? Yeah, my family's been here about almost 25, 30 years. Yeah. But uh, I don't want to say it. <laughs> Culture, I guess. Everything is different. We're all the same, but we all just look at each other differently. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Africans, honestly, can look down on African Americans because they'll say, well, they don't have no sense of culture and they don't have no drive or whatever, but that's also a misconception because how being born over here, when you think about Africa, you think about people who live in mud huts and children who are starving but when you go over there you actually see that is a beautiful country every everywhere has its slums right and when you go over there in Africa and the way African Americans are perceived is like they're all gangbangers and they do drugs and they don't have a sense of culture so it's just it's a media portrayal and it, 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 I guess you can say it breeds distrust amongst both because we're all people who are African, like African Americans that are born here are Africans and a, a bunch of other things. They just, I can, I don't want to say lost their way, but just been brainwashed, honestly. It's nothing different besides maybe an accent or two. But, you know, the food is different because of what you have, but nothing really different. You see that movie coming to America? The first one or second one? The first one. Absolutely. Would you consider yourself to be somebody like that? Like you what? Come from like some African royalty? No, I wish. Yeah. No, I wish. I wish. I, I'm just. Yeah. My father is from the from a village in Africa. My mom is from the city. They're from Freetown, Sierra Leone, which is the capital of Sierra Leone and is in West Africa and is was one of the slave ports for. Yeah. Uh, so you speak French then? No. Uh, we were colonized, Sierra Leone were colonized by the British, so it's English. Okay. And you have other countries, surrounding countries. Africa was colonized by Europe. We got some places that were colonized by Italy, Europe, well I'll say Europe, um, England, France, Portu Portugal, and Germany. And of course, what's, what's the one? Uh, they have the good chocolate. Belgium. Yes. Because, you know, I was talking to this one guy, they said that the difference between Jamaicans and African Americans, he said Jamaicans, they make more money. Make more money? Than African Americans. I think, I think one, I think one major component, and I might be wrong, but like a lot of Africans come here, they're more successful because they came here to make money. Yeah. They didn't come here just so they could sit around with a bar, right? So you, that's why they, they tend to be a little bit more ambitious. I guess, I think... To take it away from Africa, I think anybody coming into the U.S. will be probably a little bit more ambitious than the average U.S. citizen because they see that you could come to America or to the United States and they say this is the land, home of the free, land of the brave, and that you can make an opportunity for yourself. So I guess anybody, even if you go back to like the times during um, the early 20th century during the Ellis Island, the Italians and the people of uh, Germans and the Irish people, they came over, the, even the Chinese, they came over here and they just seen that was land of opportunity and they did what they had to do. So I can guess, I guess it goes for anybody. All right, now you wanna get into some dating questions? Absolutely, go ahead, ask me some questions, man. All right, now, first impressions. Let's say, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think a woman's mind, yeah, anybody's mind can be changed. Uh, can a woman's mind be changed? Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes, I remember, like, during my years of, like, going to junior high and high school, I would ask a girl out. Let's just say, high, arbitrarily speaking, it's 07, I asked a girl out in 07. She wasn't attracted or whatever. She just didn't have the time. I asked her again out in 2009. 
now me and, me and her are dating, so maybe it can be that uh, her outlook on life changed, or maybe my financial situation changed, maybe I'm just, I just look different, I carry myself differently, anything is possible, I guess. So it is possible. Yeah. All right, now what about the way you dress? How important is that when it comes to meeting women? You th you find it like you find like different results when you dress nicer versus when like you just wear like whatever like you know, crappy clothes. Um, I guess I'm gonna have to sound a little sexist sexist with this, right? Right. Uh, I guess so. Yeah, because they say they say it. it's not me saying this. Maybe it is me saying this. I am saying it, right? But they say men women are more. Uh, materialistic than men and I guess you can say the only reason men dress a certain way or try to reach the apex of society is because it attracts women so if you go back to caveman days women always want the alpha male that's the big talk around town who's the alpha male who's the better man so the man who has more money or has more financial success will be more attractive to women. He has the pick of the litter because he can provide for them. Same thing if you go back to the animal kingdom, a lion, the, the strongest lion has the pick of the has the pick of the litter because he's bigger, his mane is bigger and he's more he's more pronounced and he can fend off and protect the pride. Hope that makes sense. Yes. We'll figure it out. If it's yeah, okay. we'll figure it out. We'll do some searching. All right, now, what are your thoughts on men approaching women in public spaces like this? There's a lot of guys who come here just to pick up women. Some people say that women don't want to be bothered in places like this. Yeah. And other people say, I only come here to pick up women. If they're out here in public, then, you know, it's fair game. What do you say about that? Uh, men picking up women in public places? Yeah, like this. Uh, like the park. I guess, why not, man? Shoot your shot, man. I think in today's society, we're so focused on, like, you know, social media, so there's, like, a disconnect with actually, like, a on-person connection. Like, yeah. so, like, I, why not? But then again, I guess uh, being a man, it, I would say it's hard to approach women because, you know, nobody likes to deal with rejection and being in a public place, you know, you got people looking. Even when you think... Uh, even though nobody's paying attention, I guess it's like having stage fright. But you just gotta, if you just gotta try, you know. You got, you miss the, you miss a hundred of shots that you don't take. So I know it's overbearing at times, but just go ahead and shoot the shot. Yeah. If you get rejected, you get rejected. You just move on to somebody else, you know. What do you turn on? Uh. What's my turn off? I'm not really attracted to women who smoke cigarettes. Uh, smoking weed is alright. Uh, I'm not really into a lot of makeup. I'm, I'm into the natural look. Somebody who takes care of themselves, somebody who have an intellectual conversation, a mature conversation, and somebody who can remove their emotion or something somebody who can if we're having a conversation somebody who can think logically and not emotionally somebody who can remove their emotion from said topic and think logically and be like, and be like okay you know what I understand what you're saying I might not agree with it but it makes sense as opposed to somebody who says you know what that's right that I'm right my way of thinking is right and somebody who's just open minded that's it I don't really act, I don't think me or men, period, act for too much. Yeah. Alright now, online dating, what are your thoughts? Advantages, disadvantages? Advantages of online dating. Uh, I guess, meeting new people, right? And not, and the fear is removed, so you can be anybody that you want on online dating. Disadvantages of online dating, I would say is... For a man, I guess it would be harder to for women to respond. Like, just say you're on Tinder as a man, uh, you'll probably you can match with a hundred women on Tinder and say, "Hey, how are you doing?" Doesn't necessarily mean you'll get a "Hey" back. 
right? Because a lot of them are bots anyway. <laughs> a lot of them are bots, absolutely. And let's well, just say, the ones I've asked for bots. oh man. <laughs> and another bad, the downside of online dating is seeing a picture and thinking that the person that you match with actually looks like your picture yeah. until you actually see them in person. You're like, damn, that was a lot of filters. You all want to put the pictures that make them look better. Yeah, absolutely. I got, I got, I would say I got catfished a couple of times. There was a couple of women, they looked a whole lot better in their pictures than they actually do in real life. Do you want to talk about any specific person that catfished you? Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to. Not the name, but like just the situation and what it looked like. Uh, uh, the situation was, it was a, um, well, of course I'm black. It was a white girl. This happened a couple of months ago. This was probably in maybe August. During the summertime, it was a white girl. And, uh, she looked, she actually looked good in her pictures. You know, face done up and stuff like that. She looked a lot slimmer than I've seen her. And she was actually round it looked like she was balding so i was like that was i still hit it because i <laughs> because i'm dirty <laughs> man i'm not going oh my god i'm a dirty motherfucker man i had to get i had to get my shit out the sand all right now um, would you say that picture was taken like several years ago or Honestly, I don't know, man, because they can take pictures today, and they're worse, and you have Snapchat and so much shit on Instagram and on your phone. Well, it can beautify you, right? You, that can beautify you, yeah, so. I just remember that, because I took a picture on Snapchat, I'm like, damn, this picture looks pretty good. Yo, I took, I was playing with Snapchat photos last <laughs> night because I have three, I got two cats, I have two dogs and a cat, yeah. and I accidentally had the phone yeah. looking at me, and I'm looking at myself, I was like, I look mad fucking beautiful in this yeah, motherfucker, yeah, yeah. yo. And then I tried to do it with just a regular camera. I'm like, damn, it's like, I'm God damn, you see, as you see all your blemishes <laughs> and all your, you, all your flaws. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they say men don't know how to take pictures anyway, so right. it really no, I does. took it in the same position. Yeah. And, in a parking lot. Yeah. And, and it looked alright, but like then when I took it with the regular camera, it just didn't look good. Uh, oh, I'm like, damn, I was feeling good for no reason. Yeah. Right, so that's my, are you ready for that question? Yes. Do you usually meet women through people you know or independently? Uh, when you say independently, you independently, just... Independently, like... Right work, now, if I yeah. do... Uh, either through work, through school, through um, just like uh, meeting them on a subway somewhere, or like... Ah, a most, park, most of them. Yeah, because you know, some women will only meet through... Through people they know because they they don't trust like random random dudes just coming up to them. So like they, they need to go through that you know that a system of trust. So I, I was wondering how you did things. Uh, I always meet women independently. I never really get put on because through a friend or something like that. Because let's just let, let I guess we're friends now because yeah, I'm doing you a solid. Fuck it, we're friends now. Yeah, we are friends. Right. So now, this that, this is just me morally, right? If like you're in a relationship with your girlfriend and she has a friend, it probably wouldn't work out if your friend, your your girl, puts me on with her friend because what happened? God forbid, I do some shit and uh, the relationship doesn't work out and I cheat on her. So that would kind of make you look bad because I'm your friend. And I'm, I'd be a reflection of you, right? So, and it would make your girlfriend look bad because, you know, you're a reflection of her. So. It's kind of like missing business with pleasure. You miss, yeah, exactly. So I yeah, usually meet everybody independently. Yeah, just in but case anything goes wrong. Anything goes wrong, you don't have to hold anybody yeah, yeah, accountable. Yeah. You could just break it off and move yeah, on. Yeah, you can, you can uh, move your separate ways. Yeah. Without any, like, and nobody has to pick a side. Yeah. Because then they they might have to say, oh, that was your fault or the other person. Yeah, and you might have a dip. Let's just say you guys get married. I'm your best man, and that's yeah. the maid of honor. And, right, 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 right. well, that's going to be awkward at the wedding yeah. if it's bad blood. You are planning many steps ahead. Yes. You must be an excellent chess player. I, I haven't played chess in about a year. I like to call chess uh, mental warfare. And I also... <laughs> I like that. I like that description. 
right? And I like, and I also engage in, in uh, Scrabble, right? I like to call Scrabble vernacular warfare because it's a it's a warm word. You're thinking, man. Yes, at times because some when you're playing chess, let's say me and you at this, it's kind of. When, you, when you're outside looking in, looking at people playing chess, you can see a bunch of moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to being right here and only paying attention to your side of the field and yeah. having like a, a, how is, a, a one-sided view of your opponent's uh, field. But if you have an overhead, you act, it's like, oh shit, I see what's going to go on in the next five moves. Yeah, yeah. You must be very successful at uh, beating women. Oh man, I wish I I, I would I would like to lie and tell you that I'm highly successful at meeting women right now. I just go with the flow, man. I don't really I, I don't really approach a lot of women. Yeah. Alright now. You are a fitness guy. Yes, I'm actually a personal trainer. I work for Crunch in Tribeca. Okay. So now a lot of people who are into fitness will only date other people who are into fitness. You well you said before you you were well no no no, you said she was real, but she wasn't real in the picture. What about like if someone who wasn't into fitness at all, you date somebody like that? If you knew she wasn't into fitness? Uh, well currently my girlfriend, she's not into fitness, but you know, she's making strides, but it, we don't have to have the same, you know, um, the same, what you call it, the, the same hobbies, because that would be, I guess that would be boring, and I'm like, I'm like a spur of the moment type of dude sometimes, and sometimes I'm just boring, like, I like what I like, and you don't have to like what I like. Um, you can have your hobbies, and I can have my hobbies. You know, so as long as I like you as a person, and you, and I find you attract you, as long as I find you attractive, right? That's all that really matters. You know so saying? would you say the opposites would attract? I think opposites always attract, man. Look at Jay Z. Jay Z's not. He's with Beyonce. Jay Z's not the most attractive man. Oh yeah, yeah, he's going up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And that's all. It's all perspective, you know. Yeah. So. So he can have other things to sort of uh, compensate. Absolutely. Alright now. What kind of signal should a guy look for when he's out there trying to meet women? Trying to date women or pick up women? Pick up women. Because you know, a lot of uh, a lot of guys just blindly walk around here and if he sees like a good looking woman, he'll just go up to her. Just say if you're going in a business meet, a business meeting or if you're going in a classroom, you would have to get a feel for it. Let's see. Hey, we can pick up energy. We can tell when somebody has a bad mood, right? When it comes to approaching women, you can. I would. It's kind of hard to fucking tell, right? Man, shoot your shot, man. Shoot your shot. You never know. She might. Uh, I remember over the summer, I was on the beach. I was in Coney Island Beach, right? And there was a girl. And she was with four of her friends. And mind you, I'm not, like I said, I'm not really one who goes and approach a woman. I would, I would rather have them approaching me. And women, if you're watching this, it's alright, you can approach men. There's nothing wrong with that, right? And she actually called me over to her. And her friends were vouching for her. It's like, yeah, hey, talk to her, right? But on the flip side, if, if she wasn't with her friends, I highly doubt she would have signaled for me to come over. She... I'd look her way, she'd look my way, and she'd probably wave, and I'd probably wave back and call it a day, right? So, I guess read the room and see how it is. And and you have to be careful as well, because some women may just look at you, and they may find you attractive, and it may look like she's giving you a signal, and you may approach her, and she'd just be like, uh, nah, I'm, I'm already taken. It may not be the signal that you thought it was. So, it's, it's hard, so just... Read the room, and if you think that she's giving you a signal, shoot your shot. How did you meet your current woman? Oh, I knew her since 2010. So, uh, 
I guess she slid up in my DMs and I slid up in her DMs and boom, it just happened. Yeah. Now, so, now I'm trapped. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a lot of things that I think, right? But I can't really say it. So I was thinking this earlier. I seen this moment, right? And I'm like, I'm thinking, I like your tattoos. And just about everything else on you too. Oh, pick I'm up thinking lines. that. I'm yeah. thinking that, but I could never say that. How bad does that even sound when I'm saying it out loud? You see, that would that would how that would depend on the woman and if she finds you attractive or not, right? You see those those group of women right there just walking by us, well, walking across. Now, if they don't find me, a place, let's just say this one right here with the with the peacoat and the the, the the bag in the front, right? This one who's taking me. If I approach her. If she doesn't find me attractive, and I said the same thing that you said, she'd probably think I'm creepy. However, if she finds you attractive, you go ahead and say the same thing that I just said. She may she may blush, and you might guys you guys just might hit it off. It just depends on if the woman finds you attractive or not, or if she thinks that you're worth the time. So it sounds like it almost doesn't even matter what you say. No, because if she finds you attractive, I can say hey. How about, how about them, how about them giants? <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, we live in, in, the, in this world today, I think most people are superficial and pay attention, just going to any, let's say, uh, going to the bank, go inside the gym, go inside, uh, uh, what else, what, what's, a, what's another place of business? Any good place of business, right? And just look at the people who work there. Right, using the bank and even the hospital, for example. Look at the women there; most of them are attractive. You don't, you look, rarely see an unattractive uh, uh, nurse or unattractive banker, female banker, or woman banker, right? Because attractiveness sells. However, if they were ugly, they probably have a lot less people coming. Well, uh, except the hospital, because everybody goes to the hospital, right? But in the bank. If the woman is, a, is less attractive or the man is less attractive, they probably wouldn't close the deals that they close. Or a big Fortune 500 companies. It's either you're rich or you're attractive. One of the two. So would you say that men should just like not think too much about what they're going to say to the woman? Because like, if she's into you, it doesn't really matter what you say. And if no. she's not into you, you could have the best line in the world. And still she ain't going to be good. Absolutely. That's what I'm starting to think. I used to think, yeah, you know, you gotta be funny, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. But if she ain't into you, she ain't into you. And also, another thing for some of you, for, for us men, it's not that you're ugly, right? It's because you have no money. Look at some of the most famous rappers and basketball players and NFL players. Some of them are not attractive at all. Or like an Elon Musk. Or Elon Musk. He looks like an alien, right? <laughs> But once you have money, you look a whole lot different, man. Yeah. Your money can compensate for your own. Money compensates for a lot of things. Financial success is a success period. Now, bad boys, do you, do you think that women go for bad boys? I wouldn't necessarily say so. Another thing about I did 10 years in prison. I've only been home for like almost 17 months. I believe it's 17 months. October 2021 to make two years that I've been home, right? And I wouldn't... I think that's a misconception, right? That you can betray. I okay. didn't. I yes. didn't. I didn't do my makeup. So that's cool, man. It'll, this, it'll, it'll, this is all raw and uncut. I'll put a filter on it. <laughs> oh man, no filters, no filters, no filters. All right, now uh, you were talking about prison. Uh oh, you was the bad boy question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. So when I was younger, I. Was, I was impressionable. I think most of us were impressionable when we were teenagers, yeah. right? So, uh, being around certain individuals and going to school in certain neighborhoods, there's maybe a little bit of a gang culture, and you can see that when you're young, that the, 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 the pretty girls or the popular girls tend to date the bad boys or whatever, right? Then you start to portray yourself as one right and you embrace that culture and that culture embraces you what i could you call it a culture i guess so right maybe a subculture right then if you're not somebody who's really like that 
somebody who is built for it, then when things start to go awry and you get yourself in trouble like I did, then you start to have like an awakening and you start to see that that isn't for you and you start to remove yourself from the situation, right? You start looking at it start looking at the bigger picture like like I, like I brought up before like somebody who's outside looking in on the game of chess they can see everything that's going on on the board and you start to see that that's just a bunch of bullshit and maybe society teaches us that women like bad boys and on reality maybe they don't like bad boys but they think they like bad boys because that's what has been imprinted or that's what they're around or maybe that's the option that they have when people don't have options they just deal with what they have and when they have and once they remove themselves from what they have and see that there that there's options it's kind of hard to change in in essence i guess if that makes any sense yeah. now uh did you want to talk about prison at all uh, or you want to avoid those subjects? Because like, I don't want to bring up anything negative, you know what I mean? Nah, uh, you, me. you have any, if ask me any questions about prison, man. If you ask him, I'll tell you. Okay, now what is the secret to surviving prison? It's the secret to surviving prison is minding your fucking business and being yourself, right? Uh, when I went to, I was 17 when I got incarcerated and when I actually went upstate, right? So I was in prison with... The worst of the worst. You know, got murderers, you got serial killers, you got rapists, you got people. Who, I went to prison for robbing people, robbing individuals, right? So, you got people who are robbing individuals, and same thing with the COs. The COs will beat you half to death, they'll kill you, and they won't get in trouble. Then you'll get a, patch, a package from home, and they'll steal your food. You'll get mail, and they'll rip your mail up. So, so they're like criminals themselves. Yes. Let me tell you this, prison is just a sub, a sub society. Whatever you have in prison, the people that are in prison, the people who are locked up for whatever crime that they did and that ended them, that made them go to prison are the same people that are out here. You got people who got locked up for killing individuals and you got people who are free right now who still kill people. You got individuals who run companies who rape children. People who are in the highest position in the world who are into fucking uh, uh, who are pedophiles and you got people in prison who are pedophiles. The, the difference is that the people in prison got caught while the people are out here doing the same thing that are condemned, that people are in prison that are condemned for didn't get caught. That's it. And the rules that they tell you in prison is gangs, gays, and gambling. Those are the three G's that you stay away from, right? Because those three things will put a stigma on you and make you hot. Yeah. Now, uh, so you don't have to go in there and just fight people just to show your yourself? That all depends, right? Because I was 17 and I ended up on Rikers Island. Rikers Island, they have different buildings and I was in C-74. Those who don't know, that's the adolescent building. And the adolescent is considered anybody between 16 and 18. So those were the toughest teenagers that New York City has to offer, right? They were gang banging, they were there for heinous crimes, and they just, when, when, when young men don't have an outlet to, uh, for their energy, they just start picking on people that they deem as weak. So yes, you, I don't know how it is now, but back then it was just starting to get a little better, but it was still bad. I had to fight. I done got jumped in front of a CO. The CO told them to beat me up. I done got picked on. I done got stole from. I, you know, I had people pull out shanks on me. That only happened twice. So in Adam, this is 2010, 2011, as a 17-year-old, and yeah, so adolescence, yeah, and it all depends if you go upstate and whatever you're locked up for. If you're locked, pe rapists in prison don't survive. They you get people pick on you, COs, civilians, and your fellow inmates or convicts. Rapists aren't respected, and people who, who kill children. Uh, it also. Because you seem like a changed man, right? 
uh, rehabilitation starts within. It has to, it come to a certain point where I was like, man, I was getting in trouble, like fighting and like, like day room shit, right? Out of place tickets and just like trying to, f still trying to fit in with other individuals that I don't have to fit in with. It's better to be yourself, right? So I'm like, man, I have, if I don't want to come back to prison, if I don't want to make this a revolving door, then I have to change myself. So I ended up in a prison that, in Green Correctional Facility, this is when I had about five years left in, out of my 10 year bid. And I ended up going to college. I ended up doing Siena College in Green Correctional Facility. 2016, I ended up getting 21 credits. What's up, yo? And, um, that was that, from 2016 to 2017, I 21 credits, right? Then I got accepted, I went to another, I got accepted in John Jay, right? Because they have a prison to college pipeline program in there. And I got accepted with that college program. And I did really well. I actually, like, you they got really got nothing else to do in prison besides workout, sleep, and like to expand expand your knowledge. And I was around some good dudes, right? Who actually push themselves and you being around people who are striving, you end up striving too, right? I guess cause it rubs off, right? I, I you know, and that motherfucker I had a I had a 3.5 GPA and I made the Dean's list. Dean's list, right? And I came home and I started doing college and this is just like maybe a month and a half before the pandemic happened, I withdrew because I was just burnt out and I was just coming home and I had mandatory programs to do for parole. I was looking for work, kept getting denied and actually got hired as a personal trainer. So yeah, it all starts with them. If you want to change it, you have to look inside yourself and look, find your, idios, your idiosyncrasies and your toxic traits and your toxic habits that can lead you down the dark path that you have to change. I made, I made a lot of friends in prison that, I was still, that I'm still in contact with today that are released, that are doing good, and I'm still in contact with some individuals that are still incarcerated to this day. Some of them come home this year, some of them come home next year, some of them have life. Shout out to Jigga and Hamza and everybody else. Uh, right, I can't visit them because I'm still on parole, so there's restrictions. But I can send them, I send some of the money when I can. I, I can't afford to do it all the time. I have the phone on, so one of my friends can call. And right now, in New York State, we have, they have tablets inside, so we can send emails back and forth. When, when, do, you, uh, when do you get off the road? Uh, this will be two years, uh, 2024, but with like two and a half years, three years good behavior, with no police contact, then I can, become inactive so I wouldn't have to report to parole. And you just reminded me I have to report to my parole so I did give her a phone call this month. Thank you. So what are some things you hope to achieve once you get off? What are some things you can't do now that you want to do? Uh right now I'm gonna get my own apartment. That's what I'm working towards. But I have to save more money. I am which I'm doing good with and you know get my credit score up it's at 700 right now so i'm doing all right but you know being coming home from prison i had the opportunity to parole home to my mom was either go to a shelter or live with a family member so uh, i opted to live with a family member uh which is my mother i provide for the house and do what i can you know, but you know, being 27, almost almost 30, it's kind of frowned upon to be this old and still living with a parent, right? Because you know, once you reach this age, or oh, society tells us once you're 21 or 18, you should be at the house and into your career and living by yourself or having a house or something like that. So, baby steps, man. You have to you have to enjoy the ride while you can. Oh, no, 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 not right now, so. Yeah, so, uh, you know, right now, like, because of COVID, I heard there's, like, a whole bunch of people you know, that are in Yeah. Yeah, and uh, if, you're, if you're a dude who lives in New York City, you can always use that as an excuse, right? Well, I'm living at home with my parents right now due to me losing my job. This is the per perfect, perfect excuse. Excuse. Yeah, it is kind of like a uh, ground
Yeah, and you live. We live in New York fucking city. Do you? We pay fifteen hundred, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars to live in a fucking AirPod case, yo. It's a, it, most of these apartments look like McDonald's public bathrooms or a library public bathroom, yo. So I don't blame anybody. Like, if you have a goal that you want to achieve and you find a way to save your money, do what you got to do, man. Don't listen to anybody. Just save your money. And if you can afford to move somewhere else, move somewhere else and save money. Yeah. Sometimes I, I realized and I told one of my coworkers, sometimes you have the right idea. We're just in the wrong location to execute the idea. Maybe being a personal trainer right now in New York City isn't, especially if you work for a, a, a commercial gym, maybe it's not as profitable right now because you know, nobody's really working. And, it's, and there's so many restrictions in New York City. However, being a personal trainer and moving somewhere in like, say like Texas or Florida or somewhere below the Mason-Dixon line where there are few restrictions, it's probably more profitable. You know, sometimes you just have to change your locations to get an edge on what you're trying to do in life. Why is it just having a job? Having and maintaining a job in New York City is a fucking accomplishment. So, especially during COVID. Especially during fucking COVID. Now, you are a man that has made many mistakes in your life. Yes. If you could redo something. If I can redo something, what would it be? Some mistakes, probably not believing in myself when I was younger and tapping into my potential. Right now, I'm tapping into my potential, but I haven't tapped into my full potential right now. Because, you know, things change, so I don't, maybe this is my full potential, or maybe something is going to inspire me to actually tap into my full potential. But honestly, I probably wouldn't change anything, because everything happens for a reason, right? Maybe I needed to go to prison, because I came from a good home, and I, need to, I needed to learn my life. You know, people like to blame society and blame... Uh, their surroundings and blame people and not take accountability for their actions and you know I was around a bunch of men in prison and they say man stop at they used to tell me shit stop acting like a bitch bro you acting like a bitch whatever that's my man my man Lord Zachariah his name is Chad Zachary I call him Lord Zachariah because he carried himself like a king right he used to tell me that's not cool bro so it's going to be a point in time where you have to take accountability for your actions. So like I, anything bad that happens that I get in trouble for, I'm like, you know what? That was some dumb shit that I did. And whatever happens, I'm going to have to take accountability for it and deal and roll with the punches, right? So I wouldn't change anything. Maybe, maybe the only thing I would probably change is tapping into my genetic pool and becoming six feet and being born or, or changing uh, uh, my family's timeline so they can be born into money and being richer, being a prince or something like that. But other than that, nothing, nothing. Sir, what is the strangest thing you've seen or heard right here in this world? Oh, the strangest thing I've seen, uh, i seen they had an anti-Trump rally here. When was this? Probably should have said this out loud. You get fucking crucified for having a different opinion from everybody else. Yeah. But, you know, they had Trump, the, uh, the puppets saying he was a demon. They wanted him out of office or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And that was one. And the second weirdest thing I seen, they had like a bunch of, uh, they had a, a stripper pole out here. And like three people dancing on it. And one of them was like a cross dresser, a transgender, uh, a transgender woman, and a fat black lady. And they were singing and stuff. That is pretty strange. And one of them was in like, and they were all in like, like bikinis and stuff like that, and like strip, stripper shoes, them high heel platform shoes that strippers wear. I don't know if they still wear those, but oh, the stereotypical ones. So the people you want to see strip, don't strip, and the people that you don't want. To see. Absolutely, yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, now you said before you, you got real sincere on the Have you been back? Oh, not yet. 
When I was supposed to go, I got incarcerated and being that I'm on parole, there's restrictions for me to travel. And being with and with COVID, there's a lot there's a lot more restrictions on travel. So it that go for now. How is the support system for parole? Is your parole officer like supportive of you or is he giving you a hard he or she giving you a hard time? Um, I, so I feel, I forget that I'm on parole. See so they're, not giving you they're not giving you if you're an asshole you're gonna you're gonna get cheated as one. If you're somebody who's doing the right thing, do what you're supposed to do, then they'll leave you alone. And you will get lost in the sauce. But if you give them a reason to deal with you, then then they're going to deal with you. So you kind of lucked out in that. Yeah. Where you said you were coming to work, right? Yeah. Where you going once you leave here? Huh? Where you going once you leave? Where do I go? I usually uh either walk to what train station is that? Canal Street train station or West 4th Street train station and hop the turnstile because I'm a I'm a New York I'm a New Yorker yeah. through and through. So if I can get away with job hopping yeah. the turnstile, yeah. I hop the turnstile. You see how hypocritical that is? I'm over here talking about changing my life and I'm over yeah. still That's, hopping the turnstile. You know, I was gonna ask you, aren't you afraid of uh, getting back in trouble again? Uh, I think with that, I don't even think the cops give a fuck anymore, man. If you get caught, you just walk out the turnstile and you just pay. But, you know, I always have a metric card just in case. You think you grew up in New York? Yeah, I grew up in New York. Can you do a New York accent? Uh, I don't even know what a New York, New York accent is. That, uh, I'm trying to think of somebody who speaks with Wendy Williams. She's from Jersey. She's from Jersey? Yeah, she's from Jersey. Well, she speaks with that accent, though. I don't fucking know, man. What's yeah. up? I don't know what a New York accent sound like. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's get to the next question. Then. Um, what apps do you use? For what? Uh, on your phone. What apps do I use? Uh, well, I use Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. I'm use. I use YouTube a lot. I have group me, but that's only for work purposes. Uh, the weather app, the TD Bank app, Yo, what's up? Yeah, what what are you for? What and you the Securus app for prison. That's pretty much it. I don't really use anything else. YouTube. YouTube is my favorite app because. Eh. So how come you don't make videos yourself? Uh, you know it's crazy. I I record a lot of videos. I started doing TikToks and stuff, but it's only fitness TikToks. Um. Uh, I'm gonna say only. I mean, it's very, it's a very important contribution that you make. Yeah, but you know, Cause, you all know the, the simplest videos could be like, you know, so like, uh, you know, mean so much to people. To, yeah. yeah, you know, uh, I post mostly on my Instagram page. I thought, you know, being you know a personal trainer, you'd get a lot more followers, and I'm starting to understand and coming in terms to myself that I would rather help those who want it or let my videos you know teach those who actually see the benefits of it instead of being somebody who's popular and famous who's selling the who's selling the dream to those you know so are you hashtagging i hashtag you know but eh. you do videos or pictures on this no i do i do videos mostly oh, do like videos? workout videos and stuff yeah. like under one minute uh, I got some, most of them are under one minute, and I got a couple that's over, you know, one in five minutes. How's that going? Ah. What, what's, the name, what's the name of your uh, Instagram? My, the name of my Instagram is healthy, H-E-A-L-T-H-Y, <laughs> underscore C-H-U-K-U. Another plug-in. Thank you. You're healthy what Chuku. What about your TikTok? My TikTok is King Chuku. K-I-N-G-T-H-U-K-U. Uh, that's another plug-in. Thank you again. Yeah, you're welcome. From the bottom, and I'm still here. Yeah. But I'm going to get out the bottom soon enough. All right, now, you said before, like, you got off of 2024. If you weren't in New York, where would you be? If I wasn't in New York? Yeah, what would you be? If I wasn't in New York, where would I be? Yeah. Oh, man, that's a good question. I'd probably go to Japan. I've always wanted to go to... I'm a nerd. You see, I have a Pikachu... Uh, a Pikachu tattoo. He's a Pikachu Uchiha, so he's Pikachu as Sasuke. I have 
for you an anime card. I have a Sasuke Uchiha. Uh -huh. I have Kakashi. I have Pokemon a uh, Pokemon socks. Oh, wow. uh, so you're deep into that. Yeah, I really love anime. And one more thing. One more thing. One more thing. If I can find it. Anime and video games, yo. Whoa. I got my Nintendo Switch. You're a fan if there ever was. One. I have a sleeve of games. I have Super Mario. I have Dragon Ball Z. I have One Piece. I have Pokemon. Yeah. Blaze Blue. You know. Wow, you're fully prepared. Yeah, man. You never know who you might need a Pokemon from out here. Yeah. You, you hang out with other gamers or no? Uh. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to keep it close because of the. Uh, the audio. Uh, uh, do I hang out with other gamers? No. Yeah, no? No. Uh, I don't... You know, know what's really big though? It's gaming videos. You know what's crazy you say that? I watch a lot of, like, gaming videos yeah. on YouTube. Right. Mainly Pokemon Nuzlocke's yeah. and, like, video uh, and Mega Man Battle Network. Uh, right? And I started, like, uh, uh, watching, like, Yu-Gi-Oh videos. Yes. But on YouTube, I watch a lot of fitness content, uh, red pill content, and um, uh, 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 damn, what's, what is it? Anime analysis. A lot of people think anime is just cartoons, but anime is really, really deep if you take the time out and actually delve and try to understand it. Like Dragon Ball Z is like the number one anime in the world and like it raised us right but if you go all the way back to dragon ball you know goku's most famous move is called kamehameha right and believe it or not kamehame was actually a real person he was the last king of hawaii in the 20th century and kamehameha means his his the, the kamehame translates to the great so Kamehame what Kamehameha wave actually means the great wave. And Master Roshi's Island is actually, I think it's actually uh, an anime depiction of Hawaii. Right? Sorry. I did not know that. Okay, you ready for the next question? Yes, sir. Uh, where, where were you how did you spend the lockdown? Like in March and April when everything was shut down? Uh I went to the park and worked out. I bought a bike from Target and I rode around the city. I did Postmates. I was like, fuck that shit. I'm not getting tips. And I understand, Pete, I, if you do a job, you shouldn't really expect tips, you know? But uh, I just worked out a lot, man. I went to Coney Island, worked out. Came here, worked out. I left, lived a boring life. And uh, what else did I do? Watch a lot of anime, play a lot of video games. Watch a lot of porn. I'm not gonna lie to you. Watch a whole lot of porn. Now, what kind of tips do you have for people who are trying to get fit? Because you know, uh, there's a lot of people who are out of shape, especially here in America, and they don't know how to, how to get it. Okay, to those, please listen to me, right? Take your time. It's not gonna happen overnight. You have to make small changes. Set small and realistic goals if you're trying to achieve something, right? And don't, it's all right to follow influencers, but take everything that they say and do with a grain of salt because that they, they can see that you are impressionable and they, their target audience are you. People who are young and people who are out of shape. So take your time, yo. Right, if you don't get the body that you want, just know that you have to work with your genetic limits, right? Don't compare yourself to somebody else, no matter what it is, right? Because that's when you start to feel bad about your life or yourself, or you start to compare your body with somebody else's body, not take into the account how long that they've been working out, the genetics, what they have, what, if, whether or not if they're on steroids because a lot of these influencers are on steroids and they they are lying they are lying to you the supplements that they're taking they are fucking lying to you and the supplements that they uh, promote it's a bunch of bullshit take your time right
See what works for you. Oh man, I'm not really good at asking questions, man. No? Is um, there anything you're particularly curious about? Like about people? Like let's say you're looking at these people. Is there anything you want to know about these people out here? Because that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this, right? Is because like there's certain things that I want to know about people. So what what what, what kind of things do you want to know about them? Because you know, New York is kind of like a. Um, it's a melting pot. Yeah, it's it's a melting pot, but it's divided real seriously. All right, you go to if you go to like because uh, I was in uh, Kings Plaza Mall. Yeah, in Brooklyn. Yeah, the other the other week, and I see white people walking with white people, black people walking with black people, Hindus walking with Hindus, Chinese walking with Chinese. So there's all these divisions. Yeah. It's like you know you see all these people and you're like. Man, like I'm not, I'm not in these white circles. What, what are these people thinking? I'm not yeah. in these black circles. What are these people thinking? You know, Do you ever think that? You, yeah, you know, it's crazy you say that, right? I think that, right? And I remember, like a couple months ago, I kid you not, in the gym, I was training one of my clients, right? And I was telling him, like, we have New York, but there's so many different parts of New York that doesn't that makes sense right like say right here we're in Washington Square Park right you have everybody in here right but then you have a white New York right you have a white Washington Square Park we have a black Washington Square Park we have an Asian Washington Square Park we have a Latino Latina Lat uh, Washington Square Park right then you have the black skaters the white skaters the Asian skaters the Latin skaters we have the old skaters the young skaters you have the, the old white people, the young white people, you have the old Latins, the young Latins, you have... And I it, think there's a lot of divisions amongst, like, employment as well. I, like, you see some of these Asians, they hang around white people, but that's because they got a good job. They got... But what if what about the Asians that don't got a good job, you know what I mean? They're, they're never going to be a white person in, in their life, even though they live in New York City. Yeah. Like, I went through... I, went, I could go through years without ever meeting a white people, a white person, like, not in Queens, right? Or certain parts of New York City, like the Bronx or wherever, you can go to certain parts of New York City and never meet a white person. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Yeah, I go to, I live in the Bronx and I hardly ever see a white. This fucking right. I don't really see too many white people in the Bronx, man. That depends on where you go. Like if, if it's like, if you go to Alexander Avenue in the Bronx, right? Because they have, like, they're starting to build, like, condos and stuff like that. Yeah. And they have, like, $4,000 and $3,000 apartments. Mm -hmm. So I guess they would be more attracted to that because of it, it's like, expensive. But other than that, the Bronx is mainly, you know, African Americans or African descendant individuals yeah. and Latin descendant individuals. It's not, you don't really, even so, even with the Asian community, you don't really see too many Asian individuals and living in the Bronx not unless they own a, a, a salon whether it's like nails or they sure. they own a store or something like yeah. that and and that's not to be like offensive it's just it's just what it is yeah. like like right here yeah. this is where we at low yeah. Manhattan I don't want to it is what it is this is mainly a white or a dominated uh, neighborhood you don't really you see uh, affluent Asians, affluent uh, Latinos, Latinas, and affluent African Americans, but this is a white dominated neighborhood. Even when you go, I used to work in the uh, uh, D'Agostinos up on Bro Upper West Side by Central Park West. Central Park West, that's old school money. That's uh, hardly ever seen any black people over there unless they lived in the projects, right? That's a white dominated neighborhood. When you get up to Harlem, Harlem is now becoming a white dominant neighborhood, but it's mainly blacks and, la and Latinos and Latinas, depending on where you go. But as you get to one tenth, from one tenth to one sixteenth, it's becoming more, you know, dominated by ca Caucasians. They're, they're creeping on us. They're, they're, they're creeping. <laughs> you go to you go to Jackson Heights, Queens. That's mainly a, a, an Asian and a Latin dominated neighborhood. Yeah. Now, depending on where you, outside of that perimeter, it becomes, you know. White, dependent, Irish, uh, maybe Italian, and Jackson Heights. Did I see back? Because I used to go to school. And that was by sixty first Woodside. But you could live in, you could live in Woodside and never really meet a white person too. Yeah, you could live in one side and not see a white. Depends, right? You know, you know. Man, 
because I have a relative that lives in Woodside. They don't know a single white person. They never met a single white person. Don't don't really deal with them either. That's Woodside by Seven Train Woodside or uh, by the LIR. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the Seven Train. Yeah, that because that's. They never seen a white person over there? No, not, not seen one, but never really had to talk to one or met one or really, like, be friend with one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That is true. New York is, uh... New York is segregated, but also is not segregated, depending on where you go. Because I'll be straight with you. If I wasn't doing these interviews, I probably wouldn't even know a white person. Yeah. I mean, I know white people, but not from New York. Like, I go to South Carolina, I'm meeting white people every day. You know, it's... Like, here, like... I really don't meet that many white people. Yeah, you know what's crazy you say that? Prior to me getting locked up, I didn't have, like, I didn't associate myself or was with friends with any Caucasians yeah. or, like, spoke to them on a the regular. And it's because I went to prison because, you know, they're there that I became, like, I don't really give a fuck what a person is, their sexual orientation what they do whether they're rich or poor if you're a good person i'm gonna fuck with you right and and uh, and uh, it all deals with exposure now as i get exposed with different cultures and different people you know you keep in contact and you know you learn how to respect you know different cultures and you, ex you expose yourself to different things if you're just just trapped in one area and like i talked said before with girls who like bad boys because that's all they know if you're in a neighborhood and all you see is like African Americans or Latinos, that's all you know, right? If you go to like Woodside and Asians only interact with Asians and like yeah. maybe people who are from Mexico or Central South Cent Central South America, that's all they know. Until they come here, they're like, maybe I'm not too comfortable with this. This is too much. This is like a shocker, yeah. right? Yeah. If that makes any sense, I don't know. Because I'll be friends with anybody, really. I mean, I'm not one of those... Because a lot of Asian cats will only befriend other Asian cats because they, they think that's what's safe and that's what they feel yeah. comfortable with. But, like, to me... Yeah, I would. I, I had a lot of black and lat, uh, Latino friends. Yeah. Didn't have no uh, 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 white friends until prison and after prison. And the same thing with Asians. Yeah. Respect your parents. Enjoy your youth while you can because don't don't grow up too fast because once you become 18 and 20 and 21 life hits you like a motherfucker right um take care of your body now so your body will take care of you later um and don't believe the hype on what you see on TV the the TikTok influencers, Instagram influencers, YouTube influencers, fitness influencers, famous people, whether they be pop stars, R&B singers, uh, 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 um, rappers, actors and actresses. Uh, no, you know, they, they, li they live a whole different world than we, the us regular folks, man. And the gangster lifestyle is trash. Prison is trash. Being a gangster is trash. It's all right. If you like video games, there's nothing wrong with liking video games. It is coming from somebody who's 20, almost 28, almost 30, and still play video games, right? If you like being, if you like skateboarding, skateboard. There's nothing wrong with being a lame. Uh, if you're supposed to have it, you'll have it, right? Don't rush into it, right? Um, take your time. And take chances. Now you are a fitness trainer. Yes, sir. What kind? Of, what kind of people you deal with? People trying to get diesel. Uh, I deal with. Uh, not really. Not really. I just deal with individuals. I don't. I can train anybody, but working in the gym, mom, the clients that I have are just people who want to to stay in shape or lose a couple of pounds or whatever. Nothing like. Uh, superficial or anything. Nothing like, oh, I want to get abs. Somebody could have a belly and be like, I just want this to go down a little bit. Nothing crazy. Or so I just want to gain, get a little muscle or get stronger. What about injuries? Do you deal with people who, who are recovering from like injuries? Like, let's say, because you know, once you get into an injury, your muscle, certain muscle groups become weak, right? Yeah. So, do you deal with people like that and help them like get back to, you know, injuries? Uh, I haven't, I, injuries, uh, I've dealt with individuals who probably have like man, minor tweaks, like a shoulder from years ago, or like 
ACL damage, like for me, I had ACL surgery over, over the summer. So like I'm dealing with an injury myself from like years ago. But like major, no, nothing, no, not really. Okay, now, do you like take side gigs at, or like you take like individuals who want to hire you like on a, you know, individual personal, uh, uh, individual personal training? I mean, training? outside of Crunch. Oh, absolutely. I got like one or two people I train. Yeah. That's where all the money is at, having your own private clients because working for work let me tell you this working being a personal trainer is hard man especially when you're working for a, a commercial gym i thought when you became a personal trainer and people see you as a personal trainer they'd be like hey i want you to train me here's my money no when you work for a commercial gym you have to shake your ass yo you have to meet Deadlines. I don't know how any other gym. I don't know how Equinox is or Blink or Planet Fitness is, but I know for Crunch, you have everybody has a minimum depending on your 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 level. And you start off as a level two trainer, level two, level three trainers. They have a minimum quota of two thousand dollars a month that they have to meet. Right? Elite trainers have a, a quota of three thousand, and master trainers have a minimum of four thousand dollars that they have to meet. Right, and you always want to build your business, right? That's what they tell you. So, you always looking to get more clients for the gym. It helps you out, but it helps the gym out better, more, right? And they, you get like the gym takes about seventy percent of what you make. So, like, say, let's just say if I had somebody, somebody who bought ten sessions, right, for eleven hundred dollars, right? I don't see. I don't get eleven $1 hundred dollars. I probably get when you clock in, you get fifteen dollars for the hour, plus the payout for the session, which could be twenty dollars. So I'm making thirty-five dollars for that session, and an individual session could be like a hundred dollars. So Crunch would take the sixty-five or the seventy-five, the seventy dollars, and I would just get the thirty dollars. But when you when you're a private trainer, you get more money. However, it's harder because it's not stable because you have to. F actually market and promote yourself right, now let's say somebody wants to hire you what, what do you charge if i was to like hi- a random person in this park comes up to you but i heard you're a trainer um what you charge? how what i would charge that that all depends I, as a as a personal trainer because you have the experience and you have the knowledge and you have certifications. Some people don't give a fuck about certifications, while other people care about certifications because they just want to make sure you're legit, right? So now we have to take certain things into account. Where they live and what they do for work. And this is what they teach us at Crunch. Because now you want to have to gauge if they can afford your uh, to, to, to train at the gym. But if you're a personal trainer, I would say don't lowball yourself. And me, Depending on the, the lowest I'll go is sixty dollars. An hour? Six? No, sixty per session. Some people, some trainers charge per hour, so they'll try to put an individual through a two-hour session, and they charge them a hundred dollars an hour, or six uh, sixty dollars an hour, and end up making a hundred and twenty, and or two up to two hundred dollars an hour. Whereas me, I'll probably charge. I'm going to charge the lowest is sixty, depending on the location. And when I say depending on the location, people who can afford to live in Tribeca, Greenwich Village, Central Park West, right? They can afford to pay a hundred or maybe even two hundred dollars a session because the cheapest apartment is probably going for four thousand dollars or they're making almost half a million dollars a year. So they can afford a personal trainer and pay an hourly rate or pay two hundred dollars a session. Right, as opposed to somebody who lives in the Bronx who can barely afford to pay their phone bill. So that all depends. And it's all, at the end of the day, it's all in the value. If somebody sees that a personal trainer is worth worth it, then they'll pay. Some people pay, drop four, five hundred dollars on a pair of sneakers, right? And they want a personal trainer, but they honestly don't see the value in having a personal trainer, but they see the value in having a pair of four, five hundred dollar, nine hundred dollar sneakers. So it all depends on the person. But me, but me, my hourly rate, uh, my personal training rate is 60 if you're poor and 100 if you got it like that. Ball out.
so how can they how can they get all these? Uh, people can follow me on Instagram at healthy chuku healthy underscore chuku, and my TikTok is king king chuku. Let me just to make. So they can hit you up and say I need your trainer. They and I I'll, I'll come to you. I have a Blink membership and I can bring a guest. I'll if I'll train you in your house or at a park. It doesn't matter. I'm not really with the online training because I'm kind of a hands-on person. So I have to. I like to make adjustments and correct form. I don't want. I want people to break habits, and I like the sometimes uh, a session may take three hours because an individual may not know how to do a push-up properly, and I have to stay there and coach them through it. All right, now. You've seen a lot of bad people in this world. Yes, sir. What percentage of this world do you believe are good and bad? What percentage of the world, I think? The is... world, yeah. Like, I don't know. What do you consider to be a good person? Uh, like, let's say like somebody drops a wallet on the floor here. What percentage of people do you think they're going to, you know, bring it back to you? And what percent are going to just take it and leave? I honestly think... I don't know. I, it's kind of hard because you don't know what an end of uh, somebody. You don't know if that individual who sold a wallet drop is down on their luck, and they really because people do anything to survive, whether it's to take care of themselves or take care of somebody that is really dear to them. And I honestly think a hundred percent of the world is good, and also the same hundred percent of the world that's good is also bad because. Anybody can do good and anybody could do bad. So I can be the best person in the world. I could do good uh, uh, um, 365 days out the year. I could be a good person. Then the following year, 365 days out that year, I could be an asshole. I could be bad. So it's all, everybody has a choice, especially as they get older and they, they're conscious and they can make sound decisions. Then, yeah, they could be good or bad. Nobody in this world is born bad. Everybody is born good. However, it's just the outside influences and whether they act on being bad or not. All right, let me ask you this. How do you know somebody's crazy? I don't think, I don't think anybody is crazy. I think calling somebody's crazy is just dismissive, right? Because what happened if they're vibrating on a different frequency? What happened if they're so in tune with the world and with themselves and we're just so out of touch with ourselves, right? So what's what's crazy? Because over here in America and the Western Hemisphere, we eat beef, and right? Cheese, and cheese. And cheese. We right? don't. And you Nobody go, is trying to be in cheese. And you go to India or some other part of Asia that's, Cow, a, that's a god, right? Yeah, cows are and cows and they bovine animals are sacred. Yeah. Right? They look at us like we're crazy. However, over here, rats, we hate rats, like like New York like New York City subway rats. We we hate, we detest them. However, you go somewhere else in the world, and there's a place in they, there's a place, there's a temple out in India, I don't know where, but I, I remember seeing it on MTV2 on the Wild Boys that they hold rats as sacred animals. Right, that they feed them and they bring them milk and all that stuff. So, it is it's all perspective. What somebody and how people view and what they think is crazy, as opposed to what whatever you think is crazy, somebody else may think is sane, and whatever they think is crazy, you might think is sane. So, right, let me ask you this: Like in New York, you gotta um, you gotta be able to read people, right? You gotta figure out if this person is a threat or if he's friendly. Yeah. In a few seconds' time. Yeah. How long does it take you to figure somebody out? Let's say some random dude comes up and starts talking to you. Uh, How long does it take for you to um, figure out if this person is right or wrong? Uh, I don't know. I like to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I would have to pay attention to their actions first. Yeah. So, so. they can say whatever, like some like nonsense to you, and you'll listen to the whole thing. Others, I, I have to. Uh, I have people approach me. At least once or twice a month when I'm walking and they just start talking to me. I remember one time, 2019, sorry, 
I just started talking to a homeless person because he had something written on a cardboard box and I just found it interesting. And I stood there and I talked to him about, yeah, 14th Street, right? Union Square. I, I just started, I was talking to him for like two hours. Two hours. And it was like one of the best conversations I had all year. Now, have you had any conversations with people where you listen for a minute and you're like, I'm, I'm done here, I'm out? Yeah. Or you don't have that problem? I've, there's, it's been, I've, all the time. Because yeah. you're in New York, so like, sometimes you just, you, sometimes you just want to move or you don't want to be bothered and you just dismiss people. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I feel like, you know, some people just want to have an outlet to, they just want to, they just want to be heard. They don't want you to say anything. They don't want any advice. Sometimes people just want to get shit off their chest. And so, they, so if they come to you talking about aliens and demons and stuff, you listen to it? Absolutely. So even if he goes on for half an hour, you're going to listen? Yeah, there was this one dude, he stopped me. He said that uh, Michelle Obama was a, a, is a transgender. She was a, she was a man. Homo, uh, Barack Obama was a, a, is a homosexual because he's dealing with... Uh, uh, um, I heard that too. Yeah. yeah. And that... Uh, Tom Hanks and his wife have been replaced with alien with body body doubles. That I haven't heard of. Right? Am I like I had? I let them talk. So you listen to that? Yeah, because it's interesting. Yeah. New York City. New York City is weird like that, but. Now what about this idea? A lot of people say positive energy. Positive energy is good, right? And don't surround yourself with neg negativity. What are your thoughts on that? Um. Yes. Or or can you still be around negativity and you don't care? Uh. Because a lot of people will avoid it like the flame. Positivity and negative energy, man. Yeah. Um. Uh. Can you be around negative energy and still be positive? That's a, what you're asking. Yeah. Or um, do you try to avoid negative energy? Like, what's it? Let's say, you know, because like a lot of people will they'll just run. If they feel something like negative energy, they're gonna run. Uh, you gonna, would you run or would you? Would you def avoid? What would you define as negative energy? Negative energy is someone who's like looking for things in the past and complaining about it. Um, someone who is judging other people. Someone who's looking down on other people. Someone, oh yeah, things like that. Then someone I who is like complaining about how bad they have it. Yeah, I remove myself because nobody want to hear that shit. Because yeah. now. I feel like it's kind of narcissistic because somebody who's always talking down or looking down on individuals or talking about how bad their life is, there's somebody out there in the world who'd fucking trade their spot with you at the jump at the drop of a dime, and you basically think or feel like the world is so bad that is the world the world is revolving around you, but yet it's revolving around you, but you just have nothing but misfortune, and maybe. Is the neg the negative thoughts that you have and how you view the world that's causing such misfortune, right? You got to be positive, right? And you have to be. You have to keep a positive out. I know you can't keep a positive outlook all the time, right? Because you know it has to be a balance, duality, right? So without you. You just can't take all the positivity without taking all the negativity. It's like a critique, right? So it's like going to college and doing a doing an essay, right? A 1500 word or 2000 word essay and you put in mad pain in it and you give it to your your professor and the professor gives it back to you and you get a, a C minus on it, right? And and you feel bad, right? And because you didn't follow the format or you gave in some bullshit that this that the professor wasn't looking for, right? And you start feeling bad and you're like, man, fuck school and blah blah blah. But however, you do a you do a fifteen hundred word or two thousand two thousand word essay and you get A after A after A after A and you take all the good, whatever it is like no room for improvement, but yet you give one bad paper and you just focus on the bad. Right, and now everything is based off that one bad thing, right? Yeah. And you have room for improvement. You now I'm saying you just have to, you have to, with the good you have to take the bad, with the bad you have to take the good. That can come out of it. You just have to find the good in it. However, 
at the same time when it comes to dealing with people and situations and environments you also have to like gauge the bad right because you don't want to be in a situation for too long whether you're dealing with somebody or you're in a or or you're in an environment and it's just so bad that you end up getting hurt in the end you can see the good in something but you can also see and tell yourself remove yourself emotionally and think logically and say you know what as much as i want to give this person a try or this place a try but they keep shitting on me or nothing bad they're not changing they're not budging so i have to remove myself to to better pastures so yeah i hope I don't know if that makes sense, but I think it makes sense in my head. I don't know. Now, what about this idea that um, people say that if you've got problems, right, you got to work on yourself before you go out there and start dating people. Do you believe that, or do you think, like, if you if people who have problems are lonely too, what do you stand on that? What? If people who want to... Yeah, a lot of people say if you got problems, don't date anybody. Work on yourself first. Yeah, I believe so. That depends on what the problem is, yeah. right? If it's somebody, if I, if I have problems with like low self-esteem or um, trusting people, if I have problems with that, do you, I, th- if if an individual, wouldn't I be even worse if I wasn't dating anyone? No, I don't think so because if you have low self-esteem and problems with trusting people, then if you try to get into a relationship, you're going to bring those problems with you. You're going to if you have low low self-esteem and you get into a relationship. You're going to look for your partner to validate you, to boost your self-esteem. And that might not necessarily work. If you have a, if you're an individual who have trust issues and you get into a relationship, you might not, you're not going to, you may or may not trust that person because you have trust issues, right? You're going to look insecure. If you're somebody who's unhappy and you try to get, in, and you get into a relationship with somebody to make you happy, right? That might not work because now you're looking for them to validate your happiness or unhappiness, right? You have to be happy. But in order for you to, to be happy with somebody, you have to be happy with yourself. So if you're unhappy and you want to be with a happy person, you have to find what's making you unhappy. If you want to have a healthy relationship, if you want to be honest or or be in an honest relationship and be truthful with somebody and build trust, you have to see what's the cause of you having mistrust with individuals or not trusting individuals because it's all stemming from somewhere, right? So if you're insecure and you trying to be with somebody to validate your beauty, you have to see what where this insecure is coming from you have to go because i guess it all comes back uh, most of the things that we have issues with we go all that if you think back take time and think back sit down and think about it you it always go it all goes back to some type of fucking childhood trauma sometimes trauma happens and it's so shocking or somebody said something to us that we it all it goes we save it our brain is like a file. It's, it goes in the back of the fucking file, right? And things keep happening, happening, happening. Good and bad things keep happening, happening, happening. That is all the way in the back of the file. And we don't think about it, but we have these issues. And we get into these uh, relationships with individuals. And these issues keep arising. And we don't understand the source of the, indiv- the, 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 the issues. Because... We didn't take time to go into our mental file cabinet and look at it and say, you know what, this shit is from so long ago and just disregarding it, right? So somebody who has issues, they have to deal with themselves first before they get into a relationship with somebody because you could end up destroying that and you can end up destroying that individual because the issues and what you have. But like a lot of people they can go through like 10, 20, 30 years without ever resolving those issues. So wouldn't it be even worse for this person to be alone and with these issues? Ah, that's a good question. Yeah, because like not everybody will come, you know, will, will, will be able to resolve their self-esteem issues. Some people, they go through their entire life with no self-esteem. Um, so should these people just like never date? Should they just be like lonely for, for their whole life? I wouldn't say 
Oh, man, now I have to retract. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how to answer that question. Yeah. You got me. I'm stumped. I'm not going to lie to the people. Because, I can't you know, answer I think it. people with low self-esteem, like, they want to be with some... I mean, everybody wants to, you know, have company, right? And especially now during COVID, people are, are very lonely. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's kind of hard to say, you know, don't go find someone because you have issues. Wouldn't you say that? Yeah. I don't think that's... Yeah. But also, the person with the issues, is it fair to the other person? But what about if he tries to like hide it and cover it up or, you know, just not... Because like some people, like even though they're like, they have issues, they, they might know in their mind, like, you know, I don't want to bring my problems to, this, to her and, and weigh her down. Let me just like, let me just like find somebody, you know, to maybe have sex with and also like, you know, go for walks on Randall's Island, you know what I mean? You could go for walks on Randall's Island? Yeah. I've never been to Randall's Island. I'm, I'm going to go there. Randall's this Island, there's a lot to do, especially if you're into, like, uh, you know, running and biking and stuff like that. Oh. There's a, a lot that you can do. Um, Wait, didn't you bring a bike? No, nah, I didn't have a bike. Yeah, okay. Um, Yeah, honestly, I don't know how to answer that question. I don't know. Because yeah. I never really thought, looked into it, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I honestly don't know. Because I think everybody really, like wants to be with somebody even people with like low self-esteem i mean we're animals right we're yeah. animals who, who like humans are social people. creatures by nature yeah, yeah yeah so even if we may have low self-esteem we might like come from like a troubled background uh a broken home like we all still want to you know ideally find somebody i mean even if it's just a fuck i mean i had doctors tell me yeah you gotta you gotta have a healthy sex life you know that not having a sex life is gonna mess you up physically. Yes, sir. Like you can have like bad physical health due to not fucking. That is absolutely true. Yeah. And that was the Chinese like traditional medicine people telling me that as well. Like you gotta get out there and fuck if you wanna be a healthy person. Okay, now we are at already half an hour, so. Uh, I'm sorry, I called my girlfriend because I do not wanna get in trouble with her later. Yeah, yeah. I'm still in Manhattan. I'm in the park. I'm doing an interview. Ah, uh, you see, I just shouted you out in in, in the interview. So don't don't. I don't want you to say I never did anything for you. Yeah, yeah. You gotta check in with your lady because I recently got caught cheating. Oh really? So. Yeah, you don't want to uh, break that trust, right? Yeah, I already did that already, so yeah. I'm a piece of shit. You don't want to break it again. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm a piece of shit. You've been given a second chance and, and, and make the most of it, right? Yep. All right, now, um, you want to give a shout-out to anybody? Uh, to your girl, of course. Yeah, shout-out to Sha for dealing with my bullshit. Um, uh, shout-out to Leave. Shout-out to Leave for, uh, for allowing me, giving me this opportunity to express myself and to plug my Instagram and my TikTok in it. And shout out to all anybody else who's gonna watch this, man. Be safe, protect your energy. All right? I'm quoting that from my man, 13. Do I have your permission to put this on the internet? Huh? Do I have your permission to put this on the internet? Oh yeah, of course. The moment I sat down, you had my information to put this on the internet. Man, I don't care. Yeah. As, long as, as long as you don't put no, keep it raw and uncut. Don't put no filters on me, man. That's it.